Good afternoon, Dead or Alive. We're here on the uh, Sepulga River today for installment number five of the launches and landing series. We're here on uh, at Travis Bridge on the river. Travis Bridge is the northernmost landing on, on the Sepulga River, where the uh, northernmost landing where the river is still navigable. This river is 61 and a half miles long. It starts at the confluence of the East Sepulga and West Sepulga Rivers up in uh, Conecuh County and runs down to the confluence with the Conecuh River uh, just above McGowan's Bridge. Just to get a couple other uh, facts and, and data out of the way to begin with, when we turned off of the road here at the bridge, I had two bars of 5G service. Uh, the river level right now is about 5.1 feet. Obviously, you can see it's a little high and a little fast. Uh, this stretch of the river doesn't have a whole lot of places to stop along the way uh, anyway, and, and what few places it did have, I'm sure, are, are pretty much underwater right now. Um, it's about eight miles from here down to Staples Bridge, and uh, it takes maybe four hours. Like I said, there's not a whole lot of places to stop if, if you mess around and, and do find a place to stop or you take your time fishing and stuff like that it'll take you a little bit longer but every time i've done it it's been about four hours down this part of the river is uh kind of a mix between a, a slow sedate section and and uh some rapid shoals and even some class one rapids along here it's a it's a fun stretch of the river to paddle and we've had a good time every time we've come down if you saw uh, the video where i came down here with melinda uh, she flipped over about a mile and a half or so downstream and, and still had a good time down here all day. There are uh, no stores or campgrounds or anything close by. Make sure you've got your drinks and your ice and everything before you come down here. And uh, we'll walk back up and show you the parking area. There's plenty of parking at this landing. Uh, it, it's a, a fairly well kept landing. There, there's parking here. When you turn off the road and come down, you'll almost feel like you're driving up in somebody's yard. There are a couple of houses right up over here. Uh, I'm sure they're used to traffic in and out down here at the landing, so it's not a problem. Just stay on the road and you'll find the boat ramp. From the top of the boat ramp and looking around at the parking area, you can see there's plenty of parking. The dirt road from the turnoff of Highway 31 is about, I don't know, a couple hundred yards down here. Plenty of parking around. It's a, a good place to leave a vehicle, good place to launch. The Sepulga River is part of the Alabama Scenic River Trail. And uh, this landing and, and the signs are sponsored by the Conecuh County Commission here. And you can see the, the sign has a map. Some civic minded individual was kind enough to punctuate it with his pistol for us. Now, on the map, it does say that the Travis Bridge to Staples Bridge leg is about six to seven hours down. Like I said before, it's never taken me that long to go down there. It's taken me four hours tops, and uh, that was even having found a place to stop along the way for a few minutes. This is the Staples Bridge landing on the Sepulga River. Uh, we're about eight miles downstream from Travis Bridge and uh, probably a, a little over 13 miles upstream from the next landing down, which would be uh, Bull Slough. Uh, like I said before, the river is, is running about five feet right now. It, it's, it's high for the uh, upper leg. I'm not sure about the lower leg. Ideally, on this river, what you want is uh, three and a quarter to three and a half feet, somewhere in that area. That'll that makes the shoals exciting without being problematic and having to drag over them. And anything much higher than that, the shoals are pretty much gone. Uh, 
on this bench of the river, downstream from the river, one of the highlights here is uh, fossil hunting. There, there are shark's teeth in the bed of the river. When you get down closer to Bull Slough Bridge, there are a lot of gravel bread. There are a lot of gravel beds in the river, and uh, you can get out and sit through those gravel beds and find a lot of sharks and stuff like that. So I'm going to add up a picture of, uh, of the sign that I took a while ago that has a lot of waypoints. If you have a GPS, this, this river is just lined with waypoints of you know that are interesting places. There are a couple waterfalls that are just off the river. You'll have to paddle upstream on some of the side creeks. There's an old mill farther down past Bull Slough Landing. Uh, lots of interesting thing to see, things to see, and this is a very pretty river to paddle. Again, there, there's no stores, no lodging, anything close by. Uh, this bridge is the uh, US 84 bridge, uh, US Highway 84, where it crosses the Sepulga River. Easy enough to find, and uh, hopefully I'll get a better picture of the, of the scenic river trail sign. I've got uh, four full bars of 5G service at this landing, so uh, if you need to make a call or, or get in touch with somebody, that, that shouldn't be a problem at all here. Uh, I had good cell service. And standing at the top of the boat ramp and looking around, you can see that there's plenty of parking here. It looks like it stays pretty wet sometime after a good rain, but the, the landing is for the most part hard packed sand and, and shouldn't be a problem. In the summertime, there's a lot of people, a lot of the locals will use this area as a swimming hole, so you, you're prone to see a lot of people here, but uh, it's usually a pretty friendly place and a safe place to leave a vehicle. And here's a better image of the sign, the uh, Alabama Scenic River Trail sign, like the one that was up at Travis Bridge. This one uh, doesn't have the bullet holes in it. Again, these times that they put, I have no idea how they came by these times. It's never taken me anything like that long on the, on the river here. Starting at Travis Bridge there, and then coming down Staples Bridge is where we're at now. And the next landing will be Bull Slough Ramp. Down the Bottle Creek, into the Conecuh River, to the Cotton House, uh, Cotton House Landing. This is the uh, Bull Slough Landing, uh, Bull Slough Bridge right here above us. And this is probably, oh, I don't know, 12 or 13 miles or so downstream from Staples Bridge, maybe uh, six or seven hours. Uh, again, the signs that they've got up there, I have no idea where they got their uh, times from unless they confuse the hours with miles and, and put that on there. From here down to Bottle Creek Bridge, or Bottle, Bottle Creek Landing, I'm sorry, uh, it's maybe, oh, I'd say 12 miles, 10, 12 miles, should take you five hours in, in that area. Um, I'm, I'm not really sure, I've never actually done that stretch of the river before. I do know that, like I said earlier, the uh, this stretch of river is, is well known for fossils, for being able to find shark's teeth in the riverbed. Uh, these shark's teeth are, are a million, like 65, 70 million years old. And uh, well fossilized, don't get the idea that the river's full of sharks. That's simply not the case. But uh, again, rocky when the river is low, uh, you, there's gonna be a lot of shoals, a lot of rapids and stuff. Again, there's nothing close by here. Um, no stores, no lodging. We're getting fairly close to the Bogs and Boulders uh, mud park, so there would be campgrounds there if you were so inclined to come and camp. And when I pulled off the road at the top of the boat ramp up here, I think I had one bar or two bars of self, self service. And from the top of the boat ramp, turn around.
around and see the parking area. There, uh, there's pretty good parking here. This is another place that's popular with the locals in the summertime, so you're liable to see a lot of people here swimming. And the next landing down, like I said, will be the Bottle Creek landing. This is the Bottle Creek landing on Sepulga River in Brooklyn, Alabama. Uh, this is the last landing actually on Sepulga River. Uh, the next landing down from here is Cotton House Landing on the Conecuh River. Now rather than run all the way back down to Cotton House to shoot a segment, I'll use the same segment that I shot at Cotton House Landing for the Conecuh River and uh, add it in. Now from this point, there are a couple of stores almost right at the top of the hill up here, right where you turn off the uh, turn off the road to come down here to the boat ramp. There, there's a couple of stores there, a couple of campgrounds back toward Andalusia from here. Um, the Bogs and Boulders has a campground at the mud park there, and then there's another uh, RV park uh, right at, right in Andalusia, or just as you're coming out of Andalusia this way. Uh, from this point down to Cotton House Landing, I uh, couldn't even, I'd guess between 15 and 20 miles maybe, uh, and, and probably a good 10 hours or better of, of paddling, 10 or 12 hours to, to get down there. This, this stretch of the river would be a long haul down, and I couldn't tell you anything about what the river is like from this point down. This landing gets its name from Bottle Creek, which comes in to the Sepulga River right here at the landing and I know I've been told before that if, if you paddle just a little ways up Bottle Creek you'll actually come to the remains of an old mill that's built across the creek there and uh, from all the pictures I've seen of it and all it's a, a very scenic uh, worth your while trip to make just a couple hundred yards or so up the creek. I had uh, one bar of cell service when I got out of the car up here at the uh, top of the ramp Again, the river is high right now, uh, probably a foot and a half or two feet higher than, than what you would want to try to try to paddle it. And from the top of the boat ramp, looking around at the parking area, you can see there's plenty of parking here. Like I said, this is right in Brooklyn, Alabama. Not exactly a bustling metropolis, but uh, should be safe enough to, to leave a vehicle and all here. And with the river being as high as it is, one of the good things about such a uh, short fetch river, this river only drains 61 and a half miles. So even though it's up high right now, it'll drop quicker than most of the other rivers in the area. So this is a, uh not actually a landing per se, it's, it's a sandbar at a, off of an access road right at McGowan Bridge. You can see McGowan Bridge on US 29 right there. And the coordinates that I'll post in this section of the video will be uh, the coordinates for exactly where you turn off of 29 to get down here. Now it's, it's an unimproved road, it's bumpy, it's, it, there's a lot of uh, water holes in it. So this is not advisable unless you've got a truck to come down. If you don't have a truck, if you've got your kayaks on top of a car or something like that, you're probably better off to go on down the Cotton House Landing. Cotton House Landing is only a mile or two downstream from here. This is just a, an alternate place to take out in roughly the same area if you want to, uh, coming down from Parks Bridge. Uh, um, I'll put a map up there that'll show the, the it'll have the uh, river highlighted from Hearts Bridge on down to uh, Cotton House and this spot will be marked on that same map also. Now I've never I've never been this far down on the Conecuh River before uh, on, but I've fished off the bank down here before and that's about it so I can't tell you much about the river or the scenery. I can tell you that this uh, rock wall on the other side uh, from from up around above Hearts Bridge all the way down that's pretty typical of, of the banks that you'll see. It's a really scenic river, real pretty place to come and paddle.
This, uh, this landing is pretty much out in the middle of nowhere. There, there's no stores close by, anything like that. Uh, this would be uh, a, a launch, either here or Cotton House would be a launch to go from here down to Parker's Bridge. And that'll be the next one we do on, on this, on, on this uh, river. So like I said, this isn't actually a boat ramp. Uh, we're actually parked maybe uh, 150 feet or so uh, up the hill. There is some concrete on this little chute coming down through the woods here. And once you're over that, this chute right in front of the camera here, all the way down is, is the best launch here. Over on the edge of the sandbar here, you see it's a rather steep bank. And it'd uh, be great for launching. You could launch from up here. <laughs> recovering not so much okay this is cotton house landing uh, the the ramp is a little bit sanded in right now but it's actually a concrete ramp underneath us here now this is nearly as I can tell this landing is on private property but it is an, an accepted and allowed launch point uh, there, there are signs up the hill uh, we'll take a picture of one when we get back up there that says if you're not launching a boat, you're trespassing. They don't allow camping. They don't allow loitering, littering, uh, open fires, anything like that here. And uh, and we'll also show you there is very limited parking area up here. But this is the uh, the other landing. We're probably a mile or two uh, downstream from McGowan Bridge now. And. Uh, the, the road is unmarked where it turns off of the paved road. Uh, my GPS coordinates will be right at the point where you turn off of the paved road onto this dirt road. Follow the dirt road all the way down to the end. There's the end. So, uh, again, nothing close by. Um, no stores, no, no lodging, no campgrounds, anything like that. It's strictly a, a boat launch or a boat recovery spot, and that's it. I think the next one downstream from here is Parker Bridge, and we're probably going to run out of daylight again here pretty soon. And here at the top of the ramp, you can see what I mean when I said there was very limited parking here. The, the road just comes down, makes a big loop. There's a little bit of a parking area off on the other side of my truck there. And uh, just makes a loop and goes right back out the way it came in. And there's the sign.